What's up guys, Shane Starnes here with Droid Motor X. You finally have your Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus in hand and you've already been through the initial setup. I'm gonna show you guys the next 10 things that you should do to your Galaxy S8 to get the very best out of your experience. Let's go ahead and get started. The Galaxy S8 features Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and the back of the phone. Now Gorilla Glass 5 is pretty good at protecting your device from cracks from say dropping your phone and it even helps to protect from cracks when dropping your phone on rough surfaces. However, it is not scratch resistant. Gorilla Glass 5 is notorious for scratching easily. If you want to protect the back of your Galaxy S8, the very first thing you're going to want to do is grab a slick wraps. You'll even want to slick wraps if your phone is in a case. Believe it or not, some cases can actually scratch Gorilla Glass 5. Not only will a slick wraps provide protection to your brand new phone, it's also going to add a little bit of flair. Big shout outs to slick wraps for sponsoring this video. Be sure to hit up the link in the description for your $5 off code. Once your phone is all protected in a case and you're rocking a slick wraps, you want to go ahead and set the face lock. Now I had previously been a proponent for the placement of the fingerprint scanner as far as not thinking it was that big of a deal but after even using this for just a few hours i can see that that fingerprint scanner is awkwardly placed so what you'll want to do is head into your settings go into lock and screen security and change this from fingerprints to face there's also an iris scanner but it does require one extra step so you'll have to turn on the screen with the wake button and then also swipe up i prefer the face lock but just remember the face lock is not as secure as a pin fingerprint or the iris scanner in fact it even gives a disclaimer that your twin could potentially unlock your phone if using face lock and then other people have been able to unlock galaxy s8s with pictures so just keep that in mind you may not know this but the galaxy s8 comes with the 1080p screen enabled so in order to get the full resolution out of your galaxy s8 you'll need to enable the qhd plus display in order to do that we'll jump into settings we'll go up to display and then right here where it says screen resolution, you can go ahead and bump that up to QHD+. Now keep in mind that the QHD+, is going to drain the battery a little bit quicker. And if you notice that your battery is dying faster, you may want to jump back down to 1080p. And then you can even use 720p to get even better battery savings. Another thing that I always do when I take a phone out of a box is I go ahead and set my alarm. My alarm was set on my previous phone, but if I forget to do that, on my new phone, then that means I'm going to be late for work in the morning because I have to have an alarm to wake me up. To set up your alarm, you'll go into your clock and go to your alarm. Go ahead and set it up here. For me, it's 6 a.m. And I would go ahead and select all my dates, Monday through Friday. And for me, I work on Saturdays as well. So I would go ahead and tap Saturday and then also go to church and I get up six o'clock for church. So I'll go ahead and tap Sunday as well and then click save. Now, if you ever have a day off, you wanna make sure you go back in there and turn that off so that you can sleep in. Next up is the nav bar. Samsung is notorious for changing the arrangement of the back button and the recents button. I've been on the LG G6 for the past couple of weeks, so I am used to those being reversed. If you wanna switch these, you can and make them more like stock Android. Go into your settings, go into display, go into navigation bar, and here you can rearrange those buttons. So you can just set back home and recents, and that makes it more like stock Android. Next up, you wanna be sure to uninstall bloatware. So I have the Verizon model and it comes with tons of bloatware. Some of these we won't be able to fully install. We'll only be able to disable, but out of sight, out of mind. Also, if you disable them, they're not eating up resources in the background. So we'll go into our app drawer and some right off the bat, this all these games and stuff that come with it, we don't need those. They're just taking up storage space. So you'll long press and then click uninstall for anything that you want to install. This will fully uninstall. Now, a system application that you want to disable, say we go into the Verizon folder. If I want to disable the caller ID, I don't have an option here to fully uninstall, but I can disable that and it's not going to be eating up resources in the background. I'm not gonna get any annoying notifications from that app. So we'll go ahead and disable that. 
and once it's disabled, you see it disappears altogether. So another really handy feature in TouchWiz is Smart Stay. I always like to turn on Smart Stay because there's nothing more annoying than reading a long article or reading a book or whatever you happen to be doing and the screen just shuts off. With Smart Stay, as long as you're looking at the display, the display will not turn off and it works very well. So what we'll do here is we'll go into our display settings and we'll turn on Smart Stay. And since you have Smart Stay enabled, you can also go up here to the screen timeout. Where is it at? You can go to screen timeout here and set this to 15 seconds. So anytime you're not looking at the screen for 15 seconds, the screen will go to sleep, saving you battery life. Another really handy feature is the download booster. If we go into more, you can turn on download booster. What this does is it enables Wi-Fi and LTE networks at the same time. So you can utilize both the Wi-Fi and the LTE connection to download files faster. Uh, that's for files that are 30 megabytes or larger. So if you have like a very large game that you need to download or just any file at all that is larger than 30 megabytes, you'll be able to use both the Wi-Fi and LTE networks to speed up the download process. Uh, just be sure that if you do enable this, that you are on an unlimited data package. If you're not on an unlimited data package, this will use uh, your limited data. So if you're on a five gigabyte plan, just be aware that if you turn this on, anytime you're downloading something larger than 30 megabytes, you will be using that LTE plan. Another thing that I like to do when I turn on a phone is to go ahead and enable the step tracker. If we go into this phone, it's under Samsung and Samsung Health. Now, the reason I like to do this is because I'll inevitably forget to turn it on and I'll go to work and I'll work all day and I'll put in, you know, 8,000 steps and I'll go to check it at the end of the day and it's not even tracked my steps. And so I don't even know how much activity I've had. It's always nice just to go ahead and enable this right out of the box. Do remember that it is using the pedometer and other sensors in your phone to track those steps, which can use a little bit of battery life. So if you don't need it, you don't have to turn it on. It's always just nice to know how much activity you've had during the day. Just keep in mind that it is gonna use a little bit of your battery. So we're going to start, agree, and we'll just go ahead and agree to everything. So now your step counter is enabled and it will automatically begin to track your steps. The Galaxy S8 comes with a really cool feature called Bixby, but Bixby is incomplete. So there are no voice commands enabled on Bixby at launch. Those will come later. There's just no voice functionality at all. Right now, all you have are some cards, which is nice, but it's not a complete experience. If you want a complete experience, Google also has Google Assistant, which is built in to this phone because it has Nougat. So the way that you're going to enable Google Assistant is just a long press your home button. That's going to launch Google Assistant. And I've already kind of started the setup process here, uh, but we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. All right, so Google Assistant is now enabled on this phone, and now you get more of a complete experience than you would get with Bixby. Hopefully these tips will help you to have a better overall experience with your Galaxy S8. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. You can find more of me at droidmoderx.com. Follow me on Twitter at droidmoderx. Thanks guys for watching. Be blessed. I'll see you in the next one.